Hello, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to talk about the 1D, 2D, and 3D lists in Python. So a one-dimensional list, a 1D list, is created by using the square brackets. So if you have a variable called values is equal to a list of numbers, then we'll wrap each number, it sets, sets the numbers inside the square, square brackets like this. So we have 10 numbers in here. And a 1D list, you can you know, uh, visualize this as a row of data or a column of data, whichever is convenient for you. But we usually use columns because it's just easier to see that way. And so you see a lot of the, the representation in the book and other places as in the column. The elements or the values of a list can be accessed by using its index number, very similar to the string. So lists will always start from zero from the index 0 to the index of n, depending on how many items or elements you have in that list. So for example, on the first box on the left, if you want to access the value 80, it's in the uh, sixth position of the index 5. Now because lists are mutable uh, data types, that means its data can also be changed. We can say, I want to change the value 80 in the fifth index position to 87, and we'll do that just by referencing its index 5 and then set, assign that with a new value 87 and you will replace that list with a new value. It's very convenient that way. Now here's a string and a list. Uh, you can kind of see their similarity and their differences here. So strings and lists are similar in many ways in that the way how you access the elements or the data. So a string, as you can see the word here, has the value Python and the values on the list has a, has a six elements that contains those numbers we saw earlier. And if you want to grab, let's just say, the letter P from the word Python, then you would just reference its index, which is always going to be zero for the first index. So word of zero will give you letter P. And likewise, if you grab the a zero index of the values, you get the number 32 and so forth. Now you see also here is negative index of minus 1 for the word and a index 1 a minus 1 for values as well. Now of course not all languages support this and Python happens to be one of them that does support a negative index. Uh, what it is is actually you're going to start instead of 0 from the left side of the string or the list you could start from the right side or the end of the list or string and you can count backwards. Let's go backwards. So a minus 1 will always be the last character in the string or the last element of that list. As you can see, if you, if you type a, white, a word with a minus 1, you get the letter n. Or the values of minus 1, minus 1, you get the, letter, the number 80. And of course, if you want to find the size or the length of a word or the values, you just pass that to the length function and you get the number of, of characters or number of elements in the in the list. And uh, the last one you see here, if I try to change the first character of the word Python uh, to a, letter, a lower letter P, you see that it's illegal because strings are immutable type, right? You cannot change its data. List, however, is mutable, so you can access its index and also you can mutate its index, uh, its values based on that index. Well, why that works is because if you think about it, a list contains a collection of data, those data types. In this example here, it just contains numbers. I could have the word Python in there as well. And if I want to change the word Python to a different word like Java, I'm actually changing the entire string. I'm not changing the individual character of that word. So that's why it makes total sense here. Let's look at something uh, that you might run into. This is what's called a parallel list also known as parallel arrays in other languages. Say that you have a, um, a list of students and their classes and test scores and the grade you can assign to that student. So usually you do something like this because in the, in a, a list, it's kind of very, it's pretty hard to like store you know a student, their class and their score and the grade in a single list like this. Okay, it's very inconvenient. But so you would create separate lists for each of those content or those uh, entities. And the thing about parallel lists is that they all share the same index. 
So if you go down the column, if you look on the right side, if you go down the column for James, that is the zero index for James. You get the course that James takes, which is Python. You get his score and you get his grade and so on for Maria and, Ze and Zeke. So that's how parallel lists are really useful in this case. And so if you want to iterate through this list, you could just do something like the following. You can say in the range of the uh, length of the students or any of those lists, it doesn't matter in this case, it's a rectangular uh, list, right? And then you can print their information using the same index of i. Okay? But so something like this is okay. But usually when you do when you deal with some situation like this, you would think of it as something like a collection or a group or a student record. Okay? And when you see something like this, the first thing that comes to mind is what's called a table. So you see here a table on the right side is a it looks very similar to the one we saw earlier. The first column is James, so that's a student record. The second column is Maria's record, and Zeke has the third column there in that scenario. And so a 2D list, and we can change that into a 2D table or a table or a matrix by assigning each of those uh, 1D lists into a 2D list, right, to a list. And so we have a list of 1D lists, which is called a table or a matrix. Now, this is something that we're probably, you know, are, are more familiar with. You see a table of rows and columns. And the first row represents all the names. The second row represents all the classes they took and scores and grades and so on. And the column represents each record. This is a little bit odd how you look at it this way because you don't you usually don't see it this way. We see it in something like this. If you rotate it around, you see that the first column represents all the names. Second is the class, scores, and grades like that. This is a typical table you see an Excel sheet or a, a database table. We're more familiar with something like this. So each row represents a record. Okay. But when you do the code, it's actually easier to do the other way around. And so here is another example of what a 3D list might look like. Now it does get you know complicated as we move on to 4Ds and NDs. But a 3D is a cube, really. Just an, it's just a cube. And it represents the uh, so the row represents the first index, which is the y on the axis, and the x axis represents the column. And then the Z is the depth, represents it represents the third index of this cube. And when you put that into code, it will look something like this. So you have a scores of scores, for example, test scores. And the first box there, the green box, represents the first layer or the first 2D, right? 2D matrix. And the second is the two another 2D and a third 2D layers. So what you get, if you put it all together, you get a cube that looks just like that. And you can access the data by referencing the correct rows and columns and uh, a depth. So if you want to get the number 25, you will represent, you can get it by uh, referencing the um, row one for the y axis, and then uh, the index of two for the x axis, the column, and then the depth will be the second layer, which is uh, one in this case to get the uh, number 25 from that table, or in this case, that cube. So it's really um, I mean, this has nothing to do with Python. This is just very uh, common uh, features in most languages when you deal with 1D, 2D, or three-dimensional uh, lists or arrays.